Well, hello again. You're watching Bride Northmore Photography. It's my mission to inspire the photographic community by passing on my knowledge, passion and skills. I'm a photographic judge, lecturer, educator and workshop leader based in the United Kingdom. You can subscribe anytime. Hit the button or watermark and don't forget the bell icon for those important updates. And please don't forget to comment. But most of all, enjoy the video. So hello and welcome back to Brian Northmore Photography. Um, last week I produced a behind the scenes um, video on a week long project photographing wild birds in the garden. Um, it was kind of motivated by the coronavirus restrictions in the UK, which leaves everybody, certainly photographers, stuck inside the um, boundaries of their own properties and not able to go out or do the normal photography, normal task that they would do. Um, so it started me thinking about a way that how can I actually turn this into a positive and something that I realized was that a few years ago I decided that it would be a good idea to do some garden bird photography. So turning the whole negative situation on its head and looking at it as an opportunity I thought that maybe this is a good time to actually get out there and see if I can um, rekindle this old project and bring it to some sort of fruition. So um, I've received many positive comments on that video that I put out last week and it had a huge amount of information in it and um, I'm kind of overwhelmed to be honest by the amount of positive feedback I've had. But what I really wanted to do was try and tie everything together in terms of what equipment I used, um, what settings I used and how I brought the whole thing together just in one concise video just so you, you, can, you can get all that information together and try it for yourselves. The information is in the original video, but this I think is a far better way of doing it. So what we're going to cover in this video is a lot of information. So I'm gonna cover um, the hide, how I set that up and how you could do yours. I'm gonna talk about the setup that I used and once again, some ideas for your own. And I'm also gonna talk about the camera and the lens settings. Now this is a huge amount of information, so I'm going to provide this presentation um, as a free copy in printed format. So if you want me to email or send that to you, what you need to do is subscribe and comment. So either hit that little um, watermark in the bottom right hand, left hand, whatever it is, corner of the screen, subscribe immediately that way. Go to my YouTube channel page and use that. Or if you want to, go to my website and subscribe to my website. But in some way, if you want me to send you this information, I need to be able to contact you. So please do that for me. Um, so let's get on with the main bulk of the information. So the hide that I, that I produce is made from, from what I had in the garden. And that's what I want you guys to take away from this. That's the takeaway, that you can use what you have around you. Now for me, I use the existing garden furniture I had a parasol that produced a very nice shelter to sit under should I need it, if I didn't, the weather was fantastic. Um, and the camouflage net that you can see isn't anything special that I bought, it's what my children use for making dens in the garden. So I actually um, used that for a few days instead. But what's important is that it gave me somewhere to sit, um, maybe even more importantly a table to put my coffee cup on, and also it enabled me to sort of have somewhere just to poke the lens out through and be able to view the birds and what was happening. And it did work, it really did work. Um, there were blackbirds landing just a couple of feet away from me. Um, and some of those, I can't remember if I've got pictures of them in the presentation or not, but some of those were really close to me and I was able to take pictures, pictures of those as well. But you can be creative. You don't necessarily need to do what I've done. You can use a garden shed, you can use a pop-up tent, you can use a tarp if you've got one, you can use um, a hedge, um, a, a bush, any sort of screening that you might have in your garden. It's just something so that the birds are not distracted or startled by movements that you make. It's just something to, to screen your movements and so they settle down. And it's something that you want to leave there for a few days so that they ignore it and, they take, and they're used to it. So whatever you've got, use it. it, it, it you know, there's no right or wrong here, just use what you've got. 
And the same is true of the setup that I used as well. The setup is very, very basic. Um, basically, what I did was over the last few weeks, I've been getting the garden ready for spring. So I've had a number of trees and branches which have come down during the summer, sorry, during, during the winter, during the high winds that we've had. I've picked up those. I've had to trim a few things back, bits and pieces back to pieces. So I've just arranged that, put it in place in the garden, supported it, screwed it together with some wood screws where I needed a little bit more rigidity so it doesn't fall apart. And I've used some, some common sense really. I've drilled out the tops of the branches so that I can fill them as nuts, use them as little pots. Um, I've drilled out some smaller holes and pushed peanuts into. I've used a, an ice cream lid um, filled with water and described, um, disguised with bark around it so that they've got somewhere to drink. Once again, I left that there for a few days. The longer it was there, the more used to it the birds got and the better it worked out. So I suggest that you do that as well. Now onto camera equipment. Um, this is where um, I'm going to start coming up with a lot of information. So I'm going to put some more pictures up for you in a minute and give you a chance to sort of settle down and get ready to take some notes. Um, whatever information I use, whatever I give you next, is valid for your system. Now my camera of choice is my Canon um, EOS 5D Mark IV with my Sigma 150 to 600 lens. Um, you can use any other thing that you want. Um, it doesn't have to be this, okay? But what's important is that you take away what the general settings are and learn those. So, um, before I go through in detail what the equipment is, take a few minutes and get yourself sorted out so you've got something to look at. Okay, so where were we? Right, um, camera equipment, yes. Um, camera equipment that I use. So as I said before, um, or I think I may have said before, um, the camera of choice which I actually use is the Canon 5D Mark IV. Um, lens choice for me, and this is a bit of a mouthful, um, it's a Sigma 150 to 600mm f5 to f6.3 DG OS HSM C type lens. Um, the C basically means contemporary. It's a contemporary version and a sports version. The contemporary version is, is the cheaper one, but it's fine for what I use. Um, if you're really interested in knowing why I've got this set up and how this came about, then you want to watch um, the video. I'm going to put it up there for you so you can see which one it is. And there will be a link to it in the comments, sorry, in the description at the end so you can go and watch it. It's worth watching it and understand why I've got this set up and my, my reasons for choosing this particular um, camera setup. Um, I will also put um, links to all of this in the comments as well, so you, you've got all the information there. We're going to go through um, a general setup. We're going to go through any specific sort of um, settings that you may want to know about. Um, they're going to be not specific to the camera set that I've got, but related to this. But you'll be able to set up similar modes and similar things on your own camera equipment. So first off, camera settings um, and exposure. I used um, TV, which is basically stands for shutter priority. The reason I use shutter priority, and this is a new term now, is RBM, rapid bird movement. These little guys move very quick. Um, so I used one five hundredth of a second, and I didn't want it to drop much lower than that, unless I would got a few initial photographs um, sorted out and then I could add a little bit of confidence that I could slow that shutter speed down a bit and try some other different different um, photographs. But I started at one five hundredth of a second. Um, ISO, I left set on automatic. Reason for that is really quite simple. As I've just said, you know, shutter speed is king here. So ISO, set on auto, let the camera take care of it. You're going to set the shutter speed and let the camera decide what ISO it needs. 
The aperture, the way this works with it as well, is the aperture when you're in shutter mode is also an automatic. So the camera will go to the um, widest aperture that it's got, and then it will start increasing the ISO. So that's the way that it basically works. On the Canon, you can adjust the aperture slightly. So if I increase it or decrease it, for example, if I want to use some kind of um, uh, exposure compensation, that's exactly how it works. I'll force it to choose a slightly slower or a slightly higher aperture while keeping the shutter speed the same. Now, if these sort of terms are confusing you, then um, bear with me because in a few weeks time, I'm going to be starting my um, learning photography series. So metering patterns. Um, metering patterns, modern cameras have a very, very good um, setup. You know, the evaluative or matrix metering, whatever you've got on your camera system, will in 95% of the cases work fine. There may be the odd case where you've got a very dark background, very light background, and you're worried about over or under exposure on your main subject, and you want to use spot or partial metering. But to be honest, stick with your matrix metering, stick, stick with your evaluative metering, it'll, it'll come out for you. You'll, you'll get images that you can work with. So what else have we got to worry about? We've got to worry about um, how we're gonna focus on the subject. So I used IO, um, I keep doing that, AI serval focusing. Um, that basically means that as long as I'm holding down the shutter button, or in the case which I'm gonna to explain to you in a minute, I use something called back button focusing. Um, it, the camera will keep tracking the subject. It's back to RBM again, that rapid burr of movement. Um, these little guys are jumping about in the frame, so you want to focus and follow that subject and make sure that it's pin sharp. Now, when we're talking about pin sharp, what we also want to do is make sure that we're selecting a single focus point. What I found is if you used an area focus, um, expanded focus or, or, or whatever, you ran the risk of either focusing on a branch beside, behind or around the bird, the wrong part of the bird or the background. So I stuck on one single point. And that single point was placed on the bird's eye or as close to it that I could get. The reason being, with any portrait that you're doing, whether it's an animal or a person, you want the eye to be pin sharp. So I tried to focus on the eye as much as I could. So one of the problems with that is if you use the center point on the focusing, um, the bird's head will be right in the middle of the frame. If you use one of the scent, one of the points in the top third, the bird's head is in the top third of the picture, which allows all that room underneath the rest of its body to come in. So that's why I used it that way. Um, what else have we got? Well, we've also got to think about the lens settings. So when we think about the lens setting, we've got um, focus and stabilization. We've got to worry about the autofocus, which we've got to use the AI on this, so the lens is going to be set up on autofocus. Um, occasionally on the Sigma, if you need to, you can use this focusing ring and you can manually override it and bring it close to the focus and let the autofocus take over again. If the bird jumps out of the way and it loses it, bring it back in with the, with the ring and then you, you, you can just maintain that sharp focus just working with the lens. Um, Distance limiter, if you've got it on your lens, entirely up to you. I didn't use it because I had birds landing right by my feet or within a couple of feet and one's way out on, on the setup that I had. So what I always made sure I did was just kept it as close as I, I, I could um, and just used it on full range. I could have used 2.8, 10 meters, but like I said, if the bird landed closer than 2.8 meters, I wouldn't have been able to focus on it. Optical stabilization, not much point if you're mounting on the tripod and you're shooting at one five hundredth of a second. If you're hand holding with a 600 mil lens, one five hundredth of a second, ideally you'd really want to be one six hundredth of a second. Your shutter speed for hand holding should equal the focal length of the lens that you're using. So one five hundredth of a second is a little bit um, borderline, but not impossible. But I would always recommend, you've got nothing to lose, so put the optical stabilization on and use it if you're going to handhold. But it worked really well for me just having the camera on the tripod. 
Um, so a recap on those main points. That's a huge amount of information. So remember, if you actually subscribe, um, let me know in the comments that you subscribe and that you'd like a copy of the, um, that, the main points, then please let me know and I'll send you this presentation as a PDF file. Um, but main points, if you don't want to do that, hide and set up, doesn't matter. Use what you've got in the garden, use what you can find around you, be creative, use pop-up tents, use tents, use sheds, use bushes, use screens, use patio furniture, anything you can find. Uh, use dead, fallen branches, things that you've trimmed off. Please don't go cutting down trees or savaging your garden for it. It's not necessary. Use what you've got around you. Um, uh, and then once again, be a bit creative with it. Camera settings, shutter priority, five hundred of a second, matrix meeting, metering, AI cerebral focus, back button focusing, auto ISO, lens auto focus, optical stabilization, depends on what you're gonna be doing, if you're gonna handheld or put it on a tripod, um, and uh, that's about it. Um, back button focusing, if you don't use it, you can use the button on the back of the camera, and basically that focuses then, and then the shutter speed, um, your shutter release is used on the front. The advantage of it, is that you can keep your finger on that, focus all the time, and when the bird's in the right place, then you use the focus in, then you use the shutter button. It just allows you to, to work in that way. It just separates the two. It works well for wildlife and sports photographers. Aviation photographers tend to use it. Um, so that, that, that's what I'll go with. Okay, so really, um, that's just about it really. I haven't really got a lot more to add. Um, I think that's probably been quite enough information anyway. Um, the only thing I'd, I'd like to say now really is what I'd like to see you guys do is go out there and try it for yourselves. If you enjoyed this video, um, comment below, let me know what you think, um, your comments are really are appreciated. Please um, go and subscribe and most of all stay safe and enjoy your photography.